Hey everyone, welcome to FedBiz Exchange. I am so excited to talk to you guys today about my new mentorship program, The Entrepreneurial Journey. I have Jessica here with me today from Heroes Hire. Jessica has been amazing uh, with starting her company, uh, not even knowing everything to do. She has actually already jumped into doing her solicitations. Everything has happened for her within 30 to 45 days, but she's here to tell us all about it. This is our first episode. I will be bringing you weekly updates and Jessica and I will do a lot uh, on camera with you, some off camera, but I want you to go with me on this journey to support her and encourage her. And so here we go. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone. This is, I'm so excited. This is my first day of mentoring Jessica officially. Um, we've been wanting to start a mentoring and coaching program for someone that we felt had a lot of potential. And Jessica reached out to me months ago and actually I've been pseudo mentoring her anyway. And because we were ready to get the program moving, I asked Jessica a couple of weeks ago if she would be willing to work with me and allow me to, uh, to coach and mentor her, which she had already decided in her mind I was gonna do it whether I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> I, because she actually asked me before I even thought about it. And then as laws of attraction works, I started thinking about it and then I thought, oh my goodness, I could do this with Jessica. So we've actually been working on quite a bit. She has jumped over a lot of hurdles. Even before she got to me, she actually reached out to me because she wanted me to answer some questions about solicitations. I assume she was much further along, but she has just done some amazing things on her own. She just needs a little bit of mentoring and coaching and guidance and encouragement. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Jessica. And I, I want you to start out by telling us how you got started, what made you start your own business, and tell us a little bit about yourself and you know your experience. Okay. Well, thank you so much, first and foremost. Um, thank you, Michelle, for having me. Um, I actually got into um, this type of industry. Um, I started in recruiting. So initially I was in the army and then towards the end when I ETS out, um, I started looking for, you know, a career outside of the military. And I stumbled upon a program that basically trained veterans into corporate recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, you would go through this intensive training and it um, basically prepared you to recruit for government contracts. So from there, I did that for roughly um, four and a half, five years. And then I transitioned my family and I to Georgia. And um, I went, I kind of deviled over into the public sector, um, working my first um, contract as like sales positions. So from there, um, I really started to think, wait, I can do this myself. Um, I don't have to, like for a while, I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what that looked like. So when the idea kind of presented itself, um, you know, I took a step back, I had a conversation with um, my husband and I just really thought about it, you know, a little bit more. And I gained this confidence that was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's just do it. Whatever, we, whatever we're gonna do, let's just do it. So, you know, I hit the ground running. Um, I began to think about some things that I wanted to do. Um, what type of recruiting would I do? Would I do government contracting because that's what I'm used to, or would I go with the public sector because at this time I had about six months of experience. Um, so from there, um, I joined this group on Facebook. Um, it's called the um, 100K Recruiting group basically there's a group of individuals that have their own recruiting firm and i'm like what oh my gosh i didn't even know this was a thing <laughs> so from there um i started to kind of just read through i would um contribute ask a lot of questions but what i noticed was a lot of the recruiters in there i would say about 95 percent of them um they work you know in the public sector and i didn't find anyone that did government contracting wow. um so from there i found um there's actually one gentleman in there who 
he basically inquired about government contracting and even the owner of the group couldn't even give him much information. So from there, he and I con um, connected and he kind of gave me um, basically like a starter package of what I needed to do. He told me to start at Sam and um, this basically, you know, he was like, well, Sam's going to take you probably three or four months for you to get approved. It took me 30 days. Like all of the odds that, that he told me what happened, like it, everything happened so fast. Even with filing my LLC, they told me it would take 30 days. It was done in seven. It, everything just started to line up. So from there, once I decided to change the direction of Heroes Hire, um, I found you, Michelle. And I found which you because video, I was, Now, which video did you find of me? Do you remember? Yes, the first one that I found was um, actually, oh my God, it was years. You've done it like way years ago, so an uh, older one, but it was basically parts of the SAM. And mm -hmm. that's where I learned about my capability statement because I knew nothing about that I needed a capability <laughs> statement. <laughs> None of that. Um, and I also learned about the woman-owned small business certification. And I watched that, that video in its entirety. And the reason that I enjoyed your videos was so, so much was because they were easy to understand. It, like mm. I had, I had watched a couple of the previous ones before, and um, on YouTube, a lot of times um, they have what uh, they call clickbait videos, and that's basically what those videos were. They were basically mm. giving me the runaround, saying a lot of nice, fancy words, but they weren't really showing me anything. Mm. And because I am a visual learner, I love the fact that you actually walk through, you know, scenarios where you walk through the process from start to finish and that's what helped me to you know get to where I am now so um after watching wow, like that's second good video, to know <laughs> that's really good to know yeah so after watching like your second video I noticed um and it was one of the older ones I noticed that you said if you have any questions email me and I said <laughs> I told my husband I said I'm gonna email her <laughs> because I mean I said what's the word she can say it's like no or she could like not email me back but I'm just gonna try it um, and you email me back. And well, I Well, you know, most people don't find me. Uh, and that was old. I mean, I don't even know why I had the nerve to put my email out there. That's when I was really, really busy. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. I think it's because, you know, YouTube was my first way of connecting to social media. I travel all okay. over the country. I train businesses everywhere, all over the United States. But I couldn't get into the social media thing, but I knew it was important because I really wanted to reach people of color and my team, nobody on my team wanted to do the social media part, but I thought if we have to do some level of social media, YouTube is, is the closest, most normal thing to teach Absolutely. people. So Absolutely. this is really good to hear. You know, you're gonna help me a lot too, helping me understand what people need, but I am tickled to death by how things happen, happen to you. <laughs> just so quickly and you know you're right sometimes people tell you things are going to take a long time a lot of times they don't that's why you need to be ready but good for you that you were ready you were ready yes. to keep it, keep it moving so go ahead um so after i reached out i um just shot over a quick email and i asked you for a quick 15 minute um conversation little did i know that i was going to get a wealth of knowledge and after <laughs> that first conversation I told my husband, I said, I have to have her, like, she needs to mentor me. Like, she, I was wow. like, I don't know if she does it. <laughs> I don't know if she does it, but she needs to mentor me. And, that um, so and then. funny. Yeah. I don't do it. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I do it through, through my work in general, mm -hmm. but I've never really mentored, uh, in this line of work, anyone mm -hmm. per se. You know, I do, I did it in big corporate. You know, you always mentor people in big corporate. That's part of what you right. do. You have to designate somebody. Uh, but this is different. This is working right. with uh, other entrepreneurs and helping people to um, to get through processes and think a certain way and where do mm -hmm. they get the right resources. So this is a little bit different. But it's funny because I do remember you asking me if I had the bandwidth, if I would mentor you. Yes. Like, oh, good luck with that. <laughs> I, I mean, but I liked you right away. And I could <laughs> feel that you were serious. That's one of mm -hmm. the challenges is that you know because i am i'm very i'm a very giving person but i'm also a very private person but if you get in my circle in my space you'll probably get a lot out of me just that's just <laughs> i think that's one of the reasons i'm private you know what i mean because i know mm -hmm. i just will give it all but i also right. want everybody to be an entrepreneur especially yes. in people of color communities yes. african-american communities hispanic communities i want us to 
build our own wealth because that is the key. You know, I, yes. I know some people say everything's not about money. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. You know, and everything's not about race. Uh, yes, it is. You know, yes. but you can control what goes on in your life, in your community, yes. when you're creating your own jobs, when you're yes. teaching people how to make money, when you're teaching people how to build their own wealth for their own families. And I was so shocked to learn how young you were because you're so mature. <laughs> you, you're, I, I was like, because I hadn't seen you yet. Mm -hmm. I had not seen you. I've only had only talked to you a couple of times. So that was like, wow. That's wonderful that you get this at your young age. And you, I love that you decided, I'm not going to be making everybody else millions. I'm about to do this for myself. That exactly. is how I teach my children. I want my children to teach their children. And we okay. all need to be focused on our economics. And I Absolutely. felt like I didn't have ways to give back as much when I was doing this with partners on a different scale with a full staff because we were busy just trying to get, you know, the money made, bring them the revenue in. That's the way business is. But when you can give back and you have the choice to do that, it really okay. is a choice. You have to say to yourself, I need to give back. I've been so blessed. And even if I wasn't, this somebody could take what I know and turn it into something much bigger than, than me and, and what I'm doing. And so, Absolutely. yeah. And plus I love what I do. So that, yes. that's the good part is that you need to, <laughs> you need to love it. So, okay. So how, after we talked that first time, uh -huh. I was walking you through solicitations. That's why I was shocked that you didn't know that you had jumped through all those hoops because you went straight to the solicitations. Yeah. I was so I, impressed with that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I can't even take credit for that. Um, honestly, that was all God, period. <laughs> I don't well, know. It must have been like I said, I only knew um, from recruiting, I only knew the, um, the recruiting side of things. I didn't know the logistics that came to, you know, um, actually setting up your company to be able to actually bid. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm telling you, you, you helped me out so much. And um, like we I said, found I'm, something that first day, didn't we? Well, you had one, yeah. you had a couple already, right? Mm -hmm. And I was rushing you to get it done. I wanted you to get it. Well, just do it. Yes. Just do it. We'll just do yes. this. We'll just. <laughs> yes. And because... that's the crazy, crazy thing because from the time that we talked, we our energy was like that's unmatched, true. and we true. this is our first time seeing each other on camera. But you would have known we each, know other, each other. So that's, that's true. That is true. That is very, very true. That's true. But I, but you brought something and you said, I need help with this. I don't understand this solicitation. What does this mean? I love that you were not afraid. And that's the millennial in you right now, the youngness yes. in you, because, you know, when we're young, we're not afraid. I wasn't yes. afraid of hardly any, I'm still like that, but it's different. When you're young, it's like, well, I, I, the least I can do is try. It's not going to kill me. You know, like you said, reaching out to me. Well, I could write her. She could write back or she could not write back. I could still try. But that's how you do it. You have to think of it that way. And so your first call to me was about what do I do with the solicitation? How do I answer this? I'm confused about some things. And then your second call, we, we were probably talking about a third or fourth solicitation by the second time we talked, right? Which means... That, that is hugely important. You know why? Because people do all of this stuff and they don't understand that winning is bidding. Mm -hmm. The only way to win is, is, is to bid. That's why I was so excited and so impressed that you were, even though there's a lot of stuff for you to do, a lot of stuff for you to learn, how else are you going to learn if you don't just jump into it? Absolutely. You know, and then the fact that you are you, you got, let me tell people about this, how quickly you got your veteran certification. I asked you that first day, are you certified as a veteran? Because I was happy to hear that you were a veteran. And you're like, no, but I'm going to apply. Next thing I knew, you applied. Next thing I knew, you were like, Michelle, I got my certification. <laughs> I was like, Michelle wow. said I need the certification. Let me get started. Yes. It ha and you know what, Michelle? They told me 90 days. That's the Lord That's working the for you. Yep, I, I agree. I agree. And you know what? They gave it to me and I have it framed here on my wall. Good I'm like, for oh, you. Good for so you. And the reason I wanted you to get your veteran certification is because 
right now they're doing it for all the certifications but women owned we need to bid more women need to be out there more because Absolutely. that's how they set aside but the veterans they are setting it out for you guys and while they're setting it out for you i want you guys to go and get it and your chances are so much better because it's a small circle because mm -hmm. when they work with you they're getting a veteran a service disabled veteran they're getting getting a woman and any other certification that you decide to get down the line plus you are in a small business category so they get to yeah. check off these boxes they have to work with women they have to work with veterans that's why i know your chances of winning are excellent and you just need to keep bidding and that's what you and i have been working on so far so how have you been feeling are you because you were you were having a little bit of fear and frustration yeah. tell yeah. me about that so uh, my fear, it stemmed from me not knowing. So mm -hmm. I am um, slightly controlling, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I liked, what really got me was the fact that I didn't know. So when I don't know, then my mind starts to wonder and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? So mm -hmm. um, mainly my fear came from not knowing, but mm -hmm. because you made yourself available to me and you were able to just answer those questions, it put me, it made me more confident to be able to go out, you know, and to have that mindset, like you said, always win. Like uh, you always go in assuming that yes. you won. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I, I believe that. And, and, and even though I think like that, it, it's so funny. You would think that every time I win, it's the first time, time I won, because I'm like, Oh my God, I won! Oh yes. my God, I won! <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, because even though I expect to win, it's still it's so much fun winning, and it's yes. so so energizing and so um, invigorating to think that I have this challenge here. I'm going to mm -hmm. do this. I'm going to try this. Yes. And you know, all of this just puts you in control of your your future not working yes. for someone. Now I'm going to tell you something. Um, one of my um, Ask Michelle B videos, actually yesterday I did, it was about past performance. You and I talked about past performance, yes. didn't we? We talked about that before. And um, I had, I was going to do a video on it anyway, but then somebody wrote to me through through uh, FedBiz Exchange, through the training customer support department and said, you know, what about past performance? What do I do? And you and I talked about that because you have yes. a lot of experience, yes. but you work for people that are going to feel um, challenged by you. They're not going right. to want you to make it because you become a competitor. And right. what did I say? So what? Okay, if they won't give you something, we'll figure it out. You, we can, you know, you need to write uh, some, write something up on yourself, like a, um, mm -hmm. like a resume, kind of. Um, now, some people might say, would that work with the contracting officers? It could, especially in yeah. the small certified arena, because mm -hmm. they want new, new blood. They want competitors. They want you guys to get in there and say, look, I can do this. You know, yeah. she could start, which we are already looking at. We've been looking at you doing uh, recruiting for what? One to five people. Yes. All of the ones we've looked at, they're kind of small, but they're nice. They could be nice yes. incomes for you. They could be right. nice contracts. You know, it may be one people or two people that you're, you're recruiting for, for the government. But there are ways that you can get around the past performance. And like I said in the video yesterday, that I put out about past performance, sometimes you won't even be asked. A lot of times you will be. It's kind of a 50-50. It depends mm -hmm. on the situation. But you right. can write a letter basically saying, I have this experience. Here's my resume. I can get you some personal references. But this would be my first job, but I'm not inexperienced. I think that they would go for that. You, if she has 10 bids out there a month on recruiting, somebody's going to say yes. Yes. I promise. Somebody's going to say yes. But it's when you don't try, it's the people that don't try. Because she doesn't just have to bid on veteran stuff. She can bid on yeah. women-owned small business stuff. She can bid on total small business stuff. As a matter of fact, I told you, I just saw some, uh, they wanted, they were looking for two physicians the other day, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I saved that for you and I'll, I'll share that with you. But, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is you have three spaces right now and maybe it could be four later on we just we don't know but you are in a place where you could easily win within the next few months everything else happened less than 
30 days, less than 90 days, this could too. Yes. But bidding yes. is very important. And that's why I was not uh, pressuring you to go backwards. A lot of people will try to make you, they will try to, how do I call it? Like short walk you or, or make you take these, they, they try to baby step you is what mm -hmm. I used to call it. And I think it's better when you just jump into it and start doing it because the next thing you know, you, you've won. Now, you and I do need to talk about some other things. Okay, I win. She already has all of her tools. Like, you know how to get the people. You know how to do that. It doesn't yeah. matter what the industry is. You could, you could get a doctor. You could get, uh, what was one of them, a Buddhist priest? A Buddhist program uh, yes. leader. <laughs> you know, a trainer. It could be any type. And what I like about you is you didn't say, well, I only recruit this type of employee or this type of person, you know, or this in this industry. You didn't say mm -hmm. that. You you looked at all of the different types of solicitations were, that were coming out asking for all different types of employees or uh, people to do certain types of jobs. So mm -hmm. for you guys that don't understand what Jessica does, she is a recruiter, but the government is always looking for personnel. Mm -hmm. So Jessica is going to go out and find all the personnel that they need. She will be busy for the government. All she needs is one good solid contract and that is continuous income for for her she doesn't have to really manage the people she has to do some administrative stuff but that's about it but that's continuous income one contract then she goes to get another one and another one and another one and the next thing you know she's doing 10 15 20 000, maybe more a month that's how this is going to happen for jessica I'm convinced of it. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I am too. <laughs> so, and you know, at first it does seem a little bit scary because you're thinking, oh my goodness. Because I always tell people, be careful what you ask for. Yes. And the reason I say that is because I believe the powers that be, I believe in God, I believe in laws of attraction. I believe that you will get it. May not always mm -hmm. get it when you think you're going to get it, but you will get it. Oh, so yes. you have to be careful. And me personally, I don't ask for nothing I don't really want. I really don't. Because even though you may be shocked when you get it, it's like, this is so exciting. You still have to deal with the reality of having it. So right. we're going to have a long-term mentor-protege relationship because there's going to be a whole bunch of other stuff that comes up. You have yes. to think about how am I going to, you know, what if I do have two contracts? Do I need to bring somebody in? Could I use, mm -hmm. you know, my husband in this, in, in this, in the business, if he wants to, what if your husband doesn't want to do it? You might have mm -hmm. to hire somebody part time. Somebody right. has to keep focusing on bringing the business in. That's the right. biggest mistake that people make. They get Absolutely. one contract and then they stop. And the next yep. thing you know, they have one agency they're working with and that agency doesn't need you anymore. So you yes. have to have a good number of agencies that you're consistently working with because this is now your lifestyle this is now your business this is now where your income is coming from and you don't want that to stop once you learn how to work with the government you have a customer for life if you want it that's the nice thing that i like about working with the government this is not a short game it's a long it's it's a game plan it's a vision it's the mm -hmm. long game so so anything else you want to tell us about today? I know you and I have some things to talk about, which um, we only have 30 minutes usually. So we're going to get off in a few minutes, but we will uh, talk about your other solicitations that are coming up. I reviewed some of them for you. And okay. just so that you guys know, Jessica is going to be on here at least once a week. I'm so excited so that we can watch her progress and so that you guys can watch how I help her and the things that we talk about. Um, we have to talk. We talk about pricing a little bit. You kind of have that under control. You have your portion of pricing under control, but you are in an arena where uh, pricing can be kind of hard to pinpoint. Mm -hmm. But but how do you how do you look at pricing? Uh, you you were telling me that you kind of can get a feel for what that type of position or a, or a type of position is going for. Um. So. I've taken like um, in my research of how other staffing agencies have priced. I just have a rule of thumb of markup percentage that I go, um, mm -hmm. you know, up to. And that markup is basically includes, you know, what my back office 
fees would be mm -hmm. or any additional fees that I would have to have to staff this position. So I try to um, keep it within that percentage range. Um, and then um, I also do a salary comp based on the position just to see what the market, what the salary is um, average for that role, just to make sure that I can be able to attract the, you know, the right talent because you don't want to um, underbid and then you can't mm -hmm. staff the position because you right. can, you know, lose it as well. So um, I try to use both of those, you know, together. And that was one of the things that I actually learned in recruiting, um, just a small part of it, but it has helped me a lot when it comes to pricing, you know, my positions. Mm -hmm. and, and you and, already you know, have your tools that you use for recruiting. So whenever you see an yes. opportunity, you know exactly what to do to go and yes. make sure that you can get your hands on that type of position, that type mm -hmm. of personnel. And, you know, you understanding the recruiting side of it, that's, that's exactly how you do it. You know that part of the business. All you need is coaching and guidance on how to manage and how to attract the government as a client. Yes. How to Absolutely. take your, your experience from the commercial side and bring it over to the government side. And mm -hmm. it's kind of the same. Of course, you know, there's a lot more paperwork, but... The fact of the matter is, is that with you having that recruiter experience, that makes me very comfortable knowing that you know what to do on that side. Because I can only help you on the government side and tell you what to look for, what to expect, and how to handle things. But mm -hmm. like I told you with the pricing, I'm so glad you, you feel comfortable with that part because you need to sometimes say to yourself, should I go down by 50 cents per hour? Just as an right. example. Only mm -hmm. because with your first ones, you want to get in the door. Right. You want that performance. Your first contract is going to be your performance. And then mm -hmm. you're going to be able to say, yeah, I have a contract now. And that's right. going to, once you do that, it's all over for your competitors. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. You're on your way. So, okay, Jessica, this has been so wonderful. I'm so happy yeah. that you decided to do this and I'm so excited for both of us. And Me I'm too. so excited that we can help my followers and, uh, and the audience by seeing someone like you because you are them. You are yeah. like a lot of people. Some people are still working their jobs and they're ready to, they're ready to get out of it and they're ready <laughs> to take control of where their money comes from. Right. So this is going to be good for all of us. And um, you and I have some things to talk about, but you guys won't miss anything. I'll make sure that we keep you guys abreast. But we, Jessica has a business. She has family. Um, so she needs to, to get back. I promised her we, we would only do 30 to 45 minutes. But we will see you guys next week. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I know government contracting can be a little challenging, but don't forget you have Ask Michelle B. Ask me your government contracting questions anytime, anything you want to know.